Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 555 on this Resurrection Sunday morning. We will be having our um, sunrise service here in about an hour, so you can join us for that. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday to all of you guys. It's good to see you on this Sunday morning. Um, we are going to have a good day today. This morning, we're going to be looking at Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And about an hour, at about 6.55, we'll be gathering together again uh, here on Facebook to be looking at the... Um, to do a little uh, resurrection uh, sunrise service. And then at 9 a.m. we'll be gathered together uh, doing our resurrection Sunday service um, through Mark chapter 16. So it's good to see you guys today on this resurrection Sunday morning. We are in Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, and this is what it says. And the seventh month on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel who would be the political leader, the son of Shatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the religious leader, the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, verse number three, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you, and how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this in your eyes as nothing? Amen. He is risen. He is risen for sure. So the Lord appears here. Uh, speaking through the prophet Haggai to the people. It's now, uh, it's been about a month later. It's about October 17th at this stage of the game. And he asks a question to the people. He says, look at this temple that you guys have been building. How many of you here remember the former temple? Now, there would be a small group of people that remembered Solomon's temple before Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it. So he says, how does it compare to Solomon's temple? They go, this one that's before us, it's not nearly as impressive as Solomon's temple was. And Ezra chapter 3 verses 12 through 13 talks about this. It says, and many of the priests and the Levites uh, and uh, heads of the father's house, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud with joy, so the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. Solomon's temple was magnificent. This temple that they're building in the time of Haggai, not nearly as impressive. And they compare the difference. And because of that, the people who can remember the former temple actually start to weep. They go, this is not impressive. This is nothing like the other. You see, they're stuck in what we would call the good old day mentality. Oh, remember the good old days. Remember how good the good old... Here's the thing about the good old days. They're not nearly as good, and they're a lot older than you thought they were, right? The good old days were not nearly as good, and they're much older than you thought they were. So they're stuck in this habit that we can often find ourselves in of, oh, the good old days. Uh, the old temple of Solomon's day was great, and this one that we have today, it's really nothing. Here was the error that the children of Israel fell into. They were focused on the temple of of the Lord instead of being focused on the Lord of the temple. Mm, we can fall into that trap, can't we? We can focus on the church of the Lord instead of being focused on the Lord of the church. We can focus on the believer of the Lord instead of being focused on the Lord of the believer. You see, the trap that they fell into was that they, they, they got their eyes off of Jesus. They got caught up in everything else. And I'm reminded of what Hebrews chapter 12, verse number two says. And this is a great reminder for us on this resurrection Sunday morning. The writer of the book of Hebrews says, looking, fixing your eyes upon, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne 
of God. Mm. You see, back in Haggai's time, they were guilty of taking their eyes off the Lord of the temple and focusing on the temple of the Lord. And so too for us today, we can get confused. We can get our sights set on the wrong thing. But Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 reminds us, what you need to be looking at, what your eyes need to be focusing on, what you should be beholding is Jesus. Who is Jesus? Well, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. The one who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, rose again from the dead, and is even now sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. On this Resurrection Sunday morning, we learn from Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, a simple reminder. Don't get your eyes focused on the wrong things. Keep your eyes focused upon Jesus. It's about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. That song that we uh, sing frequently here at Calvary Chapel, Salmon. And here in about an hour, we're going to meet together at about 6.55 for our sunrise service. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about keeping our eyes focused on Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. Realizing that every single sermon in the book of Acts, did you know this? Every single sermon in the book of Acts was centered around the resurrection of Jesus. I don't, it's, it's a concept. It's a doctrine that is so familiar with us today that we often can forget the the implications and the significance of it. God is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. That's an important truth. Jesus died. Yes, Good Friday we talked about that. But he's risen. And that's unique. That's special. And we shouldn't spend one day a year, every single sermon in the book of Acts was centered around the fact that Jesus, who was dead, but is risen, and they constantly harped the resurrection because that's what makes Christianity unique. That's what makes Jesus different than any other religious leader. You go to the grave of Joseph Smith, there's bones. You go to the grave of Muhammad, there's bones. You go to the grave of Buddha, there's bones. You go to the grave of Jesus, and it's empty. There's no bones. Why? Because they're in a glorified body that's in heaven right now, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's praying, interceding for us, even as we gather here this morning. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a big deal. It's kind of a big deal, right? Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive. Kind of a big deal. So that's what we're going to be celebrating today. Join us in uh, about an hour at 6.55, I guess about 55 minutes from now for our sunrise service. Then again at 9 a.m. for our resurrection Sunday service with worship. And we'll be looking at Mark chapter 16. Hope you guys have a great day. And just remember this morning, as we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, keep your eyes, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated down at the right hand of the Father.